So in a recent front end interviews, I was asked to showcase one of my projects and I showcased my chat app, which I built using Modern Stack. So in this app, there's a feature for creating a new group chat. If I give it some name, let's just add someone. Let's just add a guest user over here. So yeah, did you notice something? When I clicked on any of these, this pill got added over here. And the interviewer asked me to recreate the same feature, but with some different specification. Like for example, if I search over here and click on any of the search suggestion, it should add this pill inside of this input field and input cursor should shift forward. And similarly, we can add more people over here as well. And let's say if I press backspace, this pill should be removed. So let's see how we can go on and create this component using react.js. So I've opened VS Code over here and you can see I've already created this folder multi-select input. Let me just go inside of it. So CD react just interview questions and inside of it, this multi-select input. Okay, let's initialize a new Vite application over here or a new react JS application over here. So I'm going to say npm create Vite at latest. And this will initialize a new react app inside of this multi-select input folder. So it's going to ask us what's the name of our project. I'm just going to press dot so that it creates the project inside of this folder. I'm going to select react and JavaScript and it has initialized a new react app over here. Let's go on and uh, install all of the dependencies. So I'm going to say npm install and it's going to install all of the dependencies inside of this package.json like react, react, dom, etc. And while it's installing these dependencies, I need to tell you that the project that you saw at the start of this video, I've already created a complete playlist a complete modern stack playlist on that project. So you can click the link in the description down below and build that modern stack project as well. Okay, there we go. Our dependencies I have installed. Let's say npm run dev and it should run our VTAP successfully. Okay, let's control click and there we go. Our React app has started. So what I'll simply do, I'll just uh, go inside of this SRC. Inside of app.css, I'm going to remove everything. I'm going to remove this assets folder. I'm going to get rid of all the styles inside of index.css instead of app.js. I'll just remove this, all of this, and I'll just keep uh, a div inside of this return. And I'll just say, hello world. That's it. And now if we go back to our app, you see, we have hello world rendered over here. Cool then. First of all, let's add some basic uh, styles like uh, font, family to sans serif so that font looks a little bit better okay now the first thing that i'm going to be focusing on is creating an input field so instead of this hello world i'll just add div which will contain our user search uh, input and instead of it let's plan our app a little bit so we will have an input field with all of the suggestions that it will render and other thing is going to have our pills which are going to be rendered on top of our input field right so let's just uh, write it out real quick so i'll have uh, something which will contain all of our pills component and i'll have our input field over here input field with suggestions or search suggestions Right, so let's create a div which will contain our input field and search suggestions. Now I'm gonna have a input and below this I'm gonna render search suggestions. Okay, we have pretty much planned out whole of our app and if we go back you can see we've just one input field over here right now. Let's create a state over here. So to create a state we just say use state and we have to import it from react and this use state gives us an array which contains two things. One is the variable and other is the function or the setter function which is going to be responsible for changing that. So search term comma set search term. By default, this use state is going to be empty. So simply in the value of our input text, I'm gonna say search term and on change, this will simply say it will take the event and say set search term to e dot target dot value and also let's give this a placeholder which will say search for a user and also this div right over here i'll just give it a class name of user search container now let's go on and give these some bare minimum styles but before moving forward are you struggling in react js and looking to learn it from absolute scratch let me tell you about the react web development course from odin school a three-month roller coaster of learning and hands-on fun. 
And the best part, it's not just for tech experts. Recent grads from any background are welcome, that too with a 360 degree placement assistance. Yes, you heard it right, they won't just teach you, but guide you towards the success. Check out their inspiring placement success stories at odinschool.com slash success dash stories. And here's the game changer. Odin School negotiates for the best salary packages on your behalf. They've got your back from the classroom to the boardroom. Now, investing in your future is a big decision, right? That's why they offer an EMI option that suits your budget. Plus, their fees comes with an early bird offer of up to 10,000 rupees, making your journey towards expertise even more affordable. So, mark your calendar because the new cohort is about to start. Their live weekend classes and recorded lectures ensure flexibility that fits your schedule. And obviously, the unlimited job opportunities that Odin School opens up for you. So, are you ready to level up your career in React web development? Visit the first link in the description down below for more details. So I'll go to app.css and here I'll just bring all of the styles real quick and explain you what I'm doing. So we have user search container that is this style. So here I'll just say display flex and position is going to be relative. Why am I putting position relative? Because this inside of this we have this pills which is going to be absolute and it's going to be with respect to this class name over here. You will see when I go on and create this pills you will see uh, why I gave this position relative because that is going to be absolute. Now inside of this user search input, that is this div over here, we will have width of 100%. As you can see, yep, we have given it width of 100%. Some display flex and align items to center. You can see we are typing something and this is aligned at the very center of this input field. Flex wrap because we will render all of the pills over here and when they are too many pills over here, they will wrap to the next line along with our input field as well. Some gap between all of the pills and input fields and some border and border radius. That's some normal stylings. And for our input field, we're giving border to be none, some height and some padding. And for input focus, if we just remove it, you can see if you click on it, it creates this outline, right? We don't want that. So I've put outline none. So now you might be thinking, where will we get the user data from, right? So we will use dummy JSON API. So generally in the interviews, the interviewer will provide you such APIs. So if you go on over here and search dummy JSON, JSON users API. So yep, there we go. We have this uh, docs. And instead of this, for searching the user, we have this endpoint. So if we copy and paste it over here, you can see we're searching John and we're getting all of the results with respect to that John, like Jonathan and um, Okay, we're just getting one name over here. If we just say J-O, we're going to get a bunch of names like uh, Jocelyn and um, Jonathan, etc. Right? So this is what we're going to use and this is where we will send our search term. Cool. Let's just copy it and close it. I'll just paste it right over here. Now below this, I'm going to create a function called fetch users. And what it's simply going to do is, first of all, it will check if search term dot trim we're gonna trim it is equals to empty if that's empty if our search term is empty then i'm gonna say simply return and also i'm gonna create uh, another use state over here which is going to contain our suggestions or search suggestions by default it's going to be empty so instead of it i'm gonna store all of uh, the results that we will get from our api right so i'll just say if this is empty just say search suggestions to be empty. We're not going to show anything to our user. But if that is not the case, here we will fetch our API. So I'll say fetch. So instead of back text, I'll just put this. And instead of this J O, I'm going to put my search term over here. This search term. And then I'll say dot. Then we will get some response from this, right? I'll just say response and I'll say response dot JSON. I'm going to convert it into JSON. And then I'll have another dot then chained which will give us the data. So data and I'll say set suggestions to data. And also we're going to have a dot catch over here, which will handle the errors for us. Console log this error ERR. Okay, let's just call this function inside of a use effect hook. So use effect, this use effect is going to be fired every single time the search term changes. So I'll say search term. 
and it's giving us uh, user effect has missing dependency fetch user so it's better if i just uh, bring this function inside of this use effect all right now let me show you if i go back to our app if i just open inspect and the network tab if i type something inside of it like j o yep you see it's fetching for us inside of the response we're getting all of this result great then let's go on and render all of these results right below this so over here i'm going to create an unordered list and i'll just give it a class name of suggestions list inside of it i'm going to render all of these suggestions so i'll just copy it and i'll say suggestions dot users so if you go back and see inside of our network field we have suggestions dot users and then we will have all of the users inside of it so suggestion let me just put uh, optional chaining over here just in case it's not populated yet so suggestions dot users dot map i'll put optional chaining here as well let's take one single user and the index just in case this index is useful for us sometime and i'll say return a list tag with some key of user dot email so why am i giving user dot email over here as a key so if you see the ids are just normal 11 12 uh, like simple ids right i don't i want some complex id which is you know unique to that particular user so that's why i'm using email because obviously the email is going to be unique to that particular user right and inside of it we're gonna have the image for a user and its name src will be user dot image in the alt tag I'll have backticks and I'll just render user dot first name and user dot last name. Below this, I'll have a span tag which will render the same thing actually user dot first name and user dot last name. User dot first name. Let me remove this dollar sign. Let's see. Okay, we're getting all of these users, but these images are huge. We need to take care of these. And also this is expanding our input field i think we need to create a separate element for these or maybe make them position absolute i guess to render them properly let's see let's go on and style these one by one so i'll go to app.css i'll just add for our suggestions list this uh, suggestions list class i'll say max height has to be 300 pixels because we don't want if we have hundreds of results it it will go beyond the page right so i want the max height to be 300 pixels overflow y to be scrolled so that we can scroll if they are more than uh, you know contained results like results that we can contain list style is going to be none so that we don't see that dot below the list position is going to be absolute now we're going to position them with respect to our input so now you see yeah this is the only space that we want to give our suggestions and yeah again we're going to take care of this image as well so for one single list i'm going to say display to be flex and align items to be centered so that they are uh, aligned to the very center you can see yep you see the name has been aligned to the center then the gap is going to be 10 pixels between them there it is some border bottom to be one pixel solid grayish color and some cursor pointer you can see my cursor is pointer when i hover on them but for my last child in this list you can see this has border as well i don't want to give the border to the last child because this is looking odd so i'll just say suggestion list li colon last child I want to say border bottom to be none and when we hover on each of these i want background color to be this and the images are going to have the height of 20 pixels so now you can see see now it looks much better when we hover on them as well this is giving us this hover state so this is great now let's go on and work on the logic when i click on any of these options it should get selected so instead of app.jsx i'm gonna create a, a state over here called selected users which will be an empty array by default and i'm going to create a function over here const handle select user and inside of it we are going to write our logic so let me just copy it and give it to our list tag so yeah list and i'll say on click it will call this handle select user with the current user that we have selected so let's just receive it over here user and we're going to do a few things over here so let's say set selected user and this might have some users already selected right so i'll just say take all of the users that are already inside of it selected users 
I'll just spread them and I'll say add this user right after it. Then I'll say set search term to be empty because after we have selected our user, we don't want anything inside of our input field, right? So we want to clear it and then set suggestion to empty to close our suggestions drop down. Also, let me just uh, uh, console log this right over here so that we can see what user is selected. So I'll just go to console, clear it up. Let's search J. Oh, okay. We're getting something. Let's click on this. And yep, if I expand this array, we have this user selected. If I search something else, you can see we can scroll through this list as well. Let's select something. And yep, we have two users selected inside of our array. Great. But there's one problem over here. If I say T, let's say, you're going to see, we get all of these results, Terry, Medhurst and others, right? Let's just select this Terry Medhurst. Okay, let's just type T again. You see, we get Terry Medhurst again. Why is that? We need to handle this, right? We don't want the same result and we don't want the user to select the same result again and again. So for that, we need to check what users are already inside of this uh, array, this set selected users array, and then we need to compare it with our suggestions array, with this selected users array to our suggestions array. But see, if you think about it, this process might take a lot of time complexity. So if I, you know, go on over here while rendering these suggestions, I'll have to compare every single time over here that if, and I'll just say, you know, if this user dot sum, I'm, I'm going to use some array function and I'll just search it inside of it every single time. So for every user, it's going to search that if this suggestion is inside of the selected users or not. So we don't want to do that, right? We want something much more efficient. So what we will do, we will use something called set in JavaScript. So set is going to act more like a cache over here. So we're just going to keep our IDs of the selected users inside of that set. And the good thing about using a set data structure is that it cannot contain the duplicate value. So even if we, let's say somehow selected same user twice, it's not going to add that same user's ID twice inside of that set. So yep, that is why we are going to use that. And these are some of the rare things that you get to know on my channel. So hit that subscribe button right now if you want to see more such videos like this. So I'll just create a use state over here called selected user set. And I'm going to keep the default value as new set. So this is going to create a new set over here. Cool. And what I'll do when I'm selecting a user, I'll just simply say set selected user set. And I'm going to say new set and inside of it, I'm going to take whatever that was inside of this selected user set. So selected user set and I'll just add user dot email. And again, email is something which is very unique to one user. So I'll just add that over here and yeah, this should do it. Let's see what, what's the error we're getting. Oh, we have added this if my bad. Cool. Now that we have our set in place, what I'll simply do, I'll just say, after this return, I'll say selected user set dot has user dot email. So current users email, is it inside of our selected user set? And trust me, this process is very fast. It's not as slow as traversing an array. So this is a very fast operation. So it's quickly going to check, does this have this user's email? So I'll just say, if it doesn't have, not. If it doesn't have it, then do this, else colon, I'll just give this empty fragment. That's all. Let's go on and check it. So if I just refresh this real quick, I'll just first type T. You see, we're getting all of this. If I select Terry, if I type T again, you see, we're not getting Terry. So let's continue and render all of the pills on our input field. So all of the pills are going to be rendered right over here. So over here is where we're going to render our pills. So I'm going to create a pill component, which is not created yet. Obviously it doesn't exist yet. So I'll just create a new folder for our components and I'll create a new file over here called pill.jsx. So here I'll create a new component by typing RAFCE pill. And if you don't know how I did that RAFCE, I'm using this uh, extension over here called ES7 React Redux React Native Snippet. So you can install that. Okay. So this pill 
it's simply going to take a few things first of all it's going to take the image of the user we're gonna create it very scalable so that we it can be used anywhere it's gonna be taking a text and it's going to be taking an on click function it's kind of a dumb component you can say it's not doing anything it's just taking or you can say it's a presentational component that it's just taking the uh, props and just rendering it over here so instead of this fill i'll just say and this is going to be a span not a div because we want to render it in line so this is going to have an image with the src of simple image that we are providing it through the props alt tag is going to have the text and this text will be rendered right below this so i'll have a span tag and this will render the text over here just the class name for this span is going to be user fill for which we will add a style in just a minute and i'll just have the on click and on click function over here simple and yep that's it that is all we need to do let's copy this pill and render it over here inside of the curly braces i'll take the selected users not selected user set just the selected user i'll say dot map I'll say return this pill component right here and this pill will take a few things first of all let's just give it a key since we're doing map over here so key can be kept the same like user dot email and below this oh also we're supposed to take the user from here and below this i'll just send it the image which is going to be user dot image similar to the, what we have written uh, over here user dot image and the name will be first name last name so it will take text to be instead of back text i'll just write this let's add a dollar sign over here to make it a template string and it will have an on click as well now what will this on click do it will basically remove the pill from our input field so this will be handle remove user and it will take this current user and obviously this doesn't exist yet so let's just create const handle remove user it will take a user and we'll write that logic over here in just a second but let's see if our pill is rendered here or not yep we can see one of the pills has been rendered let's search something else but obviously this is not styled yet so yeah two of the pills have been rendered over here and our input have been shifted so let's just uh, go on and style it so that it looks much better right below this i'll have user pill the parent class i'll just give it some height of 20 pixels some display flex so that uh, first the image comes and then the name align items to be center so that we have it vertically aligned some gap between image and the text some background color color some padding some basic styles over here and for the image i'm gonna give height to be 100 percent so you're gonna see yeah it looks much much better now and also let's have a x sign over here so what i'll simply do either you can add an icon or here you can just say and times so this basically will render an x so yeah you see this will render an x over here so now let's go back and work on our handle remove user logic so inside of it it's going to be very straightforward we're just going to use filter so i'll say const updated users equals selected users dot filter and inside of this we're going to filter it out so i'll just say selected user selected user dot id is not equal to user dot id so let's see what i've done so whatever selected users were already there we're just taking the current user that we're supposed to remove and we're comparing if the id is not equal to that user's id only then return it else remove it from our array and so this will re return us array over here and i'm just gonna say set selected users to this updated users also we're supposed to remove it from our set as well so i'll just say const updated let's say we're storing emails right so updated emails equals new set and inside of it i'll say selected user set so basically over here i'm creating a copy of this set and i'll say user emails sorry updated emails dot delete see it's very straightforward working with a set so we just say dot delete and we're going to say user dot email so it will delete that and then we're going to update so set selected user set to our updated emails and this should do it let's go on and see let's click on this and yeah it's getting deleted let's try to render some other user if i select this okay it's getting deleted let's just 
try to add more users over here and you can see it's wrapping our input field below this so if i just keep on adding more and more users so yeah you see it's working as it's supposed to work awesome now there's one more thing if i let's say we are selecting a user over here right let's say if i selected this jerry i want the input to immediately appear right over here i don't want to go and click over here and then type start typing again right it's not a good user experience so let's just work on that how we can bring it back to the focus so simply over here i'll just create a use ref hook so use ref i'll just keep it as null by default and i'll just say const input ref okay let's just take this input ref and assign it to our input component so I'll say ref equals input ref. Now we have access to our input component and simply what we have to do when we are selecting our user, this user, I'm just gonna say input ref dot focus, sorry, dot current dot focus. And that's it. That is all we need to do. Let's go and check it out. If I say anything, Terry Hill, yep, you see, we have already focused on this. All right, now the final task that remains is to press backspace to remove these pills. If I press just backspace once, it will remove this. If I press again, it will remove that one as well. Okay, so simply inside of our input field, I'm gonna have on key down. So whenever we press a key, this will be fired off and we will create a function called handle key down, which doesn't exist yet. So let's create it. Const handle key down. This will take an event and I'll say if e dot key if key is equals to backspace and there's nothing inside of our input field so i'll just say e dot target dot value is empty and selected users dot length is more than zero only then we will do this what we will do we'll say const last user simply uh, we will do this so we're just removing one of the users from over here right so I'll just take the last user and remove it from here. So selected users and I'll take the last user. So selected users dot length minus one and we're doing this handle remove user, right? So we're just gonna call that again over here. So handle remove user and last user and we'll set the suggestions to empty. And yeah, this should do it let's see let's try it out if i press backspace yep it's removing our pills so awesome this is a great ui now one more thing that you might be thinking is let's say if i add a user over here let's say if i search terry i should not use our my mouse over here right i should press the down arrow key in my keyboard and it should just navigate throughout this uh, suggestions right so this is the homework for you try to do it yourself first if you're not able to do it I have uploaded a reel on this particular topic on my Instagram. So you can go to Instagram and search roadside coder and I have pinned that reel on my profile. So you can go and check it out. I have explained the process, how you can do that. One more homework for you is, let's say if you're typing a lot of keys or uh, like a lot of uh, inputs over here, right? So if I just remove this, if I say T-E-R-R-Y, so you see, I typed five characters and it made five API calls. This is not at all optimized. We should use debouncing over here. So that whenever users stop typing, let's say for half a second or one second, only then we should make an API call. This is the standard protocol that we follow in the companies, right? So I've created a complete debouncing and throttling video as well. So you can click this card above my head to watch that complete debouncing video. And if you're interested to watch more such React JSON TV questions video, you can click this card over here and watch that complete playlist.